Tube amps are not everyone's cup of tea. They're big, heavy, hot, and the tube rolling experimentation can end up costing you a lot of money for mixed returns. In fact, there are some who believe that tube amps are useless when you can apply EQ through your music player to achieve the same effect as a tube amp. The king of affordable OTL tube amps is, I think, the Dark Voice 336SE. This is a big, beefy amp that is easy to tube roll, but it's also about $300. Shit has a couple of hybrid tube amps, uh, the $150 Valley and the $350 Valhalla. Little Dot and X-Duo also have their own variants, and of course, you cannot forget the LOX GP20, a tube hybrid that was much hyped when it was released. Recently, X-Duo released the MT-602 and the 604. The 602 is a $100 hybrid tube amp, and the 604 is $170. Apple's Audio sent me both amps to review. As you know, Apple's and I have a continuing relationship where they let me borrow gear from time to time. Apple's is an official reseller of every brand on their website and have great customer service. If you need a break from Amazon or eBay, take a look at Apple's website. Are the MT-602 and 604 worthwhile considerations, or just attractive paperweights? Let's dive right into the 602 and 604 features. There's a lot to cover. The 602 is the bigger brother of the 601. The 602 has, as you can tell, two 6J1 tubes. This seems to be a good choice since it's not too difficult to find 6J1 alternatives. As far as I know, you can substitute the 6AK5, 5654, and EF95 variants. The 602 is a Class A amp. Xduo says that the 602 has six times the power output of the 601. They claim a whopping 1.3 watts into 32 ohms. Unfortunately, Xduo does not provide any more data about power at higher impedances. Surprisingly, the 602 has a mute circuit. Generally, you should plug your headphones into an amp after turning it on and unplug your headphones before turning the amp off. Otherwise, you might hear a pop. Xduo says that you don't need to plug your headphones in after you turn on the amp. I found that there's no popping sound when you turn the amp on with the headphones already connected. But I did hear popping when the amp was turned off with the headphones still connected. The 602 has RCA input and output, and can send signal to powered speakers. The MT604 is also a Class A amp. It uses, again, the 6J1 tubes, but four of them. Xduo says that the 604 has 2 watts at 32 ohms, which is a mind-numbing amount of power. The 604 is a fully balanced amp. There are no RCA inputs. In order to use the 604, you must have a balanced DAC signal. As with the 602, the 604 also has a mute circuit. Perhaps the oddest and maybe a controversial feature is the 604's dual volume knobs. One knob is for the left channel while the other is for the right. Xduo claims this feature is implemented for headphones that suffer from channel imbalance. We will talk about this feature later. Unfortunately, Xduo does not publish the output impedance for either amp. I think this is information everybody should have access to. However, Xduo says that both amps should pair fine with headphones that have impedances between 16 ohms and 600 ohms. I eventually emailed Xduo about the output impedance for both of their amps. They told me it is 3.6 ohms. Overall, if you take a step back, the 602 seems to be a more traditional hybrid tube amp. The 604 with its balanced only connection and dual volume controls is an odd duck among amplifiers. There is not much to say about these amplifiers regarding the build. They are sturdy. Made of metal, both amps have tough construction. I would say it is no better or worse than the construction in the LOX GP20. The 602 has standard connections, an RCA in and out on the back, a 3.5mm and a quarter inch headphone connection on the front, and also on the front are 3.5mm aux input and of course the power switch. The 604 has a single balanced RCA input on the back along with the power switch. On the front, there is a balanced XLR output, balanced 4.4mm output, and a balanced 4.4mm input. Obviously, the two volume knobs are unmistakable. The 604 has the same build quality as the 602, in other words, sturdy. I was rather surprised by the size of each amp. Uh, 
They are, frankly, tiny. Xduo's marketing does not provide comparison photos, so I expected something far larger. The 602 sits within the palm of my hand, and the 604 is not all that much bigger. Overall, the build quality of both amplifiers is quite good. So, how do these amplifiers sound? Well, here's the thing. Hybrid tube amps, from my experience, tend to sound pretty untube amp-like, especially the cheaper Chinese stuff. When I reviewed the Lox GP20, for example, I was unimpressed with the stock tubes, and the sound of the P20 in its factory configuration appeared to be a, like a solid-state amp. When I initially started listening to the 602 and 604, I wondered if I would hear a more tube-like sound from both of these than I did with the P20. After all, X-Duo claims that they use the 6J1 tubes for these tubes' sound signature. X-Duo says, quote, every model of tube has a different sound signature, enhancing or reducing warmth, detail, and soundstage, end quote. X-Duo says that the 6J1 tubes will provide soft, sweet mids and laid-back highs. They promise that these tubes will thaw the coldest of expectations with their warm reproduction of vocals and stringed instruments. First and foremost, tube rolling is a hotly debated, often confusing, and a continually murky question. Which tubes are good equivalents? Should you get Russian, European, American, or Chinese tubes? What brand? Can you swap tubes that are not strictly compatible by using adapters? If you think that solid state amp discussions are annoying, you will get a headache making sense of the tube rolling forums. So I'm not going to spend money tube rolling these amps. Frankly, I don't have the time and I am not inclined to spend money on experimenting for a review. My overall impression of the sound of these amps will be based entirely upon their stock configurations. I decided to use my Songcause LAQXD1 and the QLX QA390 as my DAX. Both of these units have RCA and balanced outputs through their DAC sections. The song cause is neutral, while the QA390 has a more analytical tuning, with more emphasis in treble and marginally greater clarity. I plugged both amps into these DACs, using one DAC for both amps, then connecting the second DAC to both amps. I used my test playlist from Amazon Music HD. I used my Allo Audio S4X, Aventone Planar, and the Sennheiser HD6XX to test these amps. Unfortunately, there's no way to test a balanced and unbalanced amplifier on a passive AB switch. If there's a switch which is capable of this, I don't know about it, but I would love to get my hands on one. So I had to plug and unplug the headphones from one amp to the other. This is, without doubt, a serious limitation in my opinion. I am far more confident of my results when using an AB switch and must leave more room for errors when I have to resort to the hot swapping method. Regardless, the tests were done to answer two fundamental questions. First, do the 602 and 604 sound different from each other? Second, what are the sound signatures of these amps? Let's discuss the first question. Do the 602 and 604 sound different from each other? Yes, they do. Again, we're talking about the stock configuration with these amps. The 602 has clearer sub-bass response than the 604, the difference is not huge, but seemed obvious enough in this uh, untechnical A-B test. Mid-bass slam was a little harder on the 604. Transients was similar. If there was any difference here, I couldn't hear it. Sub-bass and mid-bass separation appeared to be slightly clearer on the 602. Vocals on the 604 appeared to be just a bit further ahead of instruments compared to the 602. It appeared to me that the 602 has a slight bit of vocal grain, while the 604 has a marginally smoother rendition of this detail. Sibilance was a bit more obvious on the 602, while the 604 seemed to be a little bit smoother. This was the case for both male and female vocalists. Moreover, I had the impression that vocals were a little closer to the ears, and there was a little less separation among instruments on the 602 compared to the 604. Treble was a bit rolled off, or at least less clear on the 602 compared to the 604. The 604 provided more noticeable separation among instruments in this region. I could also hear a little bit more detail in treble on the 604. Perturbations of brass and horns were easier to pick out on the 604. The 604, I should point out, does exaggerate treble, but not by much. This is nothing like the Earman TR amp or the Monolith THX Portable, both of which have greater treble emphasis.
detail and clarity was typically a bit more obvious on the 604. Of course, this also depended on the particular track. Overall, the 602 and 604 are similar but not the same. They both emphasize bass but differently. The 602 has clearer bass rendition with less sub-bass emphasis, but the 604 has marginally greater mid-bass slam. The mids are similar, but again, not the same. The 604 puts vocals slightly further ahead of instruments than the 602, but the 602 places vocals and instruments closer to the ears. The 604 has clearer treble, while the 602 seems to have a bit of a recessed or rolled-off sound. Now, let's discuss the overall sound signatures, in general. I would say both amps have a warmer sound. Attribute this to the tubes if you will. The 602 has a slightly darker rendition, however. In other words, while it has a clearer and less emphasized bass than the 604, the 602's vocals are closer to the ears, the treble seems to be a little recessed, and clarity overall appears to be greater on the 604. So while both have warm sound signatures, it's not identical. X-Duo says that their amplifiers will provide soft, sweet mids and laid-back highs, and will thaw the coldest of expectations with their warm reproduction of vocals and stringed instruments. A lot of this marketing fluff is impossible to test or to clarify. I have no idea what anybody else means by sweet mids, and I certainly do not use that term when describing sound. But the gist that X-Duo seems to be aiming for does kind of come through. I think after getting rid of the vague marketing, X-Duo is correct, generally speaking. When they say that their amps have a warm sound signature, they are correct in my opinion. Vocals always sound natural and full, never harsh, and certainly never distant. A few days ago, I asked my subscribers what they wanted to know about these amps. One of the questions I received was my opinion about whether certain headphones sounded good on these amps. Another question was whether planar magnetic headphones pair well. I have to decline answering the first question about whether a headphone sounds good on these amps. If the amps made the headphones distort or I heard buzzing, I would mention that. But as far as headphones sounding good, that's not something I can convey. Moreover, I try not to tell people what sounds good to me, partly because I have an eclectic taste and can enjoy something like the DT990 under the right circumstances just as much as I can in the Aventone Planar. Others might hate both of these headphones irrespective of the circumstances or my opinion. But the second question I can easily answer. Yes, typical planar magnetic headphones appear to work just fine on both the 602 and 604. I tried the Aventone Planar, Odyssey LCD2 Classic, and the LCD3, and none exhibited audible distortion or noise. One of the issues that we need to keep in mind when matching amps to headphones is output impedance. Several months ago, I made a video about the 600 ohm variant of the DT880, and how that particular headphone needs high output impedance, not insane levels of power. In that video, I explained why it was important to know your headphones before you plugged it into an amp. An amp's output impedance can indeed affect the sound of a headphone or speakers. I know and have seen measurements of headphones and IEMs with different output impedances. You can see on frequency response graphs how different output impedances affect sound. Sometimes it makes a noticeable difference and sometimes it does not. The general rule is that your amp's output impedance should be one-eighth that of your headphone's impedance. In other words, if your headphones are 32 ohms, your amp's maximum output impedance should be no more than 4 ohms. This is 32 divided by 8. If your headphones are 16 ohms, then the amp's output impedance should be no more than 2 ohms. Again, 16 divided by 8. Solid-state amps are really good at low output impedance. A lot of popular amps have less than 1 ohm output impedance, which means that they will pair just fine with anything. But having said all this, high output impedance from an amp does not mean you will hate what it does to your headphones or IEMs. You might actually like how a higher output impedance headphone amp affects the sound. The rule of 1 eighth is not really a rule, it's more of a suggestion. It's a good one to follow, but you don't have to. Now that I've wasted all this time talking about output impedance, what is the output impedance of the 602 and 604? X-Duo's marketing does not say. 
I emailed XDuo and asked them. They responded that both amps have an output impedance of 3.6 ohms. This is just below the 4 ohm maximum for a typical 32 ohm headphone. Both of these amplifiers have overwhelming power for the vast majority of headphones on the market. The problem is that X-Duo does not provide a full scale of power output measurements. All we get is measurements at 32 ohms. And I hate it when companies do that. It leaves us in the dark about the power fall off. I did test the Aventone Planar, the LCD2, the HD6XX, Bear Dynamic T1, and the Mod House Argon on the 602. All of them got plenty of power. Even the Argon seemed to perform at or very, very near its peak. Regarding the 604, the result is the same. Now, my Argons are not balanced, so I could not test them on the 604. However, I find it hard to believe that the 604's performance would be worse than on the 602 when you use the Argons. People have asked me about tube rolling on the 602 and 604. I already mentioned the compatible alternatives to the 6J1 tubes that X-Duo uses in these amps. I did not tube roll the 604 and 602. I did not have tubes on hand to do that. I did not want to spend money experimenting for a review unit that I'd be sending back. What I can say is that if you want to tube roll, you can, and you have plenty of options. The Lox GP20 uses 6N3 tubes, and those have a lot more alternatives available than the 602 and 604's tubes. But the problem with tube rolling is knowing which tubes to get. There are some tube amp forums where people throw around ideas and impressions, but those can be pretty murky. I suggest you email one of the main tube resellers online. They might be able to guide you through the process. My personal preference is to use new old stock tubes, but there are plenty of good newer tubes, like from the JJ Electronics company. Tube rolling is something you have to research a lot, and even then you might be confused and lost. I'm no expert in the matter and I don't feel comfortable telling people what tubes to buy, only that you do your research thoroughly. This begs the following question. Do the 602 and 604 even need tube replacements? After all, in my Lox GP20 review, I mentioned how the P20's tubes were subpar and lacked tube character, and that the amp sounded far too much like a solid state amp out of the box. I am happy to report that the 602 and 604 do not seem to suffer from the same stock tube issue on the P20. Having listened to both the 602 and 604 extensively, I have no reason to believe that anybody will need to replace these tubes immediately. Now, you might still want to replace these tubes, but there is no driving requirement unlike with the P20. I have listened to and used a lot of tube amps. Here's a list I compiled from memory. The Schittlier and Valhalla, the Dark Voice 336, the Felix Audio Euphoria and Echo, the Wu Audio WA7 with its tube power supply, the Quad PA1, the Kian Ha 1A Mark II, the Monolith Liquid Platinum, the Jolita Glass FX Tube DAC, the Tor Audio David, the Bellari HA540 Mark II, and of course the Lock GP20. The Felix, Wu, Quad, Bellari, Monolith, and Kian amps did not require immediate tube swaps. The rest, I felt, did. The MT602 and 604 also do not need tube swapping upon delivery. I think that X-Duo did a good job finding tubes that paired well with their amps. One thing I will point out is that neither amplifier with their tubes exhibited any audible noise on any of the headphones I tested. There was no popping or sizzling, which are sounds you would typically hear from bad tubes or tubes that were not seated properly. In my Lockshi P20 review, I spoke about a few concerns I had with that amplifier. The tubes needed replacement. The power supply seemed faulty as the amplifier appeared to provide inconsistent power output to my headphones. The 602 and 604 do not have the tube issues of the P20. And, thankfully, both the 602 and 604 have perfectly agreeable power supplies. They do not need to be replaced. But, there is one frustrating issue with both amps, and it has to do with the volume pots. 
On the 602, it is abundantly clear that there is channel imbalance at very low volume. On the unit I got, the channels finally balanced about the third line on the volume scale. On the 604, well, you don't have the same issue of channel imbalance as you do on the 602. And that's because you have separate left and right channel volume knobs. And that is precisely the problem. The markings on the knobs are really hard to see. And while the white lines around the knobs are somewhat helpful, they are grouped together very closely, making volume matching imprecise. There is some tolerance with the volume pots on the 604. So if you have the left channel set at around, say, line 8, you could set the right channel around line 9 and not really hear a difference. The process of matching channels is a little annoying to say the least. Once you get the channels matched to your satisfaction, then you may not have to do it again, unless you accidentally turn one of the knobs. Xduo's explanation for having separate volume pots is less than convincing. They say it is for those instances where your headphones have channel imbalance. Look, my position is this, if your headphones have channel imbalance, get them fixed. Don't buy an amp to do that. Moreover, you can use digital volume adjustment on your PC, Mac, and some mobile applications if it really is that big an issue. I understand that there are some people who have hearing loss in one ear. For them, the 604's volume implementation might be useful, and I am somewhat sympathetic towards those who have problems with their headphones, and this amp might benefit them. But. For those of us who do not have these particular concerns, the 604 just seems unnecessarily frustrating. I really would not have a problem with the 604's implementation if Xduo at least put in a global volume feature. As it is, I have to fiddle with both volume pots until I get reasonably close to matched volumes. Oh, and by the way, the knobs on the 604 were not identically fit. The right knob was not seated so that its indicator was at the same place as the left knob's indicator. Thankfully, you can pull the knobs off easily and eyeball a match. But we really should not have to do this, guys. This, however, is the extent of the issues I found with the 602 and 604. In the grand scheme, they are not really deal breakers in my opinion, but they can be a little annoying. Tube amps are a little mystical. The experimentation needed with tubes and the discussions over OTL or hybrid to say nothing about whether tubes have a sound signature are all questions and concerns that cloud the tube amp niche. I think it is generally accepted, and I am in agreement as well, that the Dark Voice 336 is a good, powerful OTL tube amp. It is affordable and you can find alternative tubes for it rather easily from the entire price spectrum. But the 336 is huge, heavy, and might be too much of an experiment for some. Hybrid tube amps give you the benefit of smaller size and theoretically some tube effect without the limitations of their OTL brothers, such as higher output impedance. In my personal experience, I have not been particularly impressed with most hybrid amps I've heard. The Schittlier and Valhalla are a mixed bag. While they are small enough and powerful, their stock tubes are, in my opinion, hardly worth consideration. In short, Schitt's tube amps don't really have a tube sound out of the box. The Lox GP20 was a serious contender in this field. It promised tube performance, but with modern features. It mostly succeeded. The additional cost for better tubes plus a more reliable power adapter resulted in a significant price increase for the P20. I estimated that the P20 with decent tubes and power supply would end up costing around $300. When I look at the MT602 and 604, I have to ask the same questions I did when I reviewed the P20. Do the 602 and 604 provide at least some tube effect in their sound signature? Do the 602 and 604 need additions or upgrades? And overall, do the 602 and 604 make sense in the average audiophile setup? Let's briefly talk about the tube sound. There are some people who think you can replicate the character of tube amps through EQ. That's not true at all. You cannot do that. Tubes have audible harmonic distortion. That is the whole reason to have a tube amp. 
Each type of tube has a slightly different harmonic distortion, which modulates or alters the sound of your music. Tube amps are thought to have a warm sound. This is generally a good layman's description. What is actually happening is that a tube amp is adding harmonic distortion and background noise to the audio. The amount of warmth is determined by the typography and the tubes. The size and design of the tubes is relevant in these circumstances. When we talk about distortion and noise, we cannot ignore the 500-pound gorilla in the room. That is, the recent trend among some companies and certain sects of audiophiles who champion the lowest imaginable measurements of both distortion and noise. Tube amps do the opposite. So, when you consider how we hear the warm sound from a tube amp, you will begin to understand that you cannot actually replicate it through EQ. It's simply not the same thing. With all this in mind, do the 602 and 604 have a tube-like sound? Yes, in degrees. These are not necessarily substitutes for an OTL amp. You get more tube effect from something like the Dark Voice 336 than you do with a hybrid amp. But if you want to experiment with a tube amp, then the 602 and 604 seem to do it. Of course, they aren't really the same. As I tried to explain earlier, these amps do have different sounds. One is not better than the other, they're just a little bit different. Now, the second question. Do the 602 and 604 need upgrade? New tubes or a power supply? No, not in my opinion. The power supply for each is perfectly fine. The stock tubes seem to be well chosen. They are not the harsh tubes that the P20 or even the Dark Voice 336 come bundled with. Instead, the MT602 and 604's tubes render that warm sound when you might expect from a tube amp. I suspect changing tubes may result in some audible alteration, but that's something you will have to experiment with later. Now, the final question. Do the 602 and 604 make sense for the typical audiophile? This brings us to value. I think that if you are looking to buy a tube amplifier and you want to limit the cost, then the MT602 and 604 are perfectly good options. Yes, I think that the 602 has value at $100. And with some caveats, I think that the 604 also adds value. As I have already mentioned, there is no additional cost associated with either of these amps. You should not feel compelled to spend more money on a power supply or tubes once you get these amps. You may still want to buy other tubes, but that's just part and parcel of the tube amp journey. You simply should not be forced to buy replacement tubes out of the box, and X-Duo's amps don't force you into that corner. Both amps provide plenty of power for most headphones. I wish X-Duo had listed more power output measurements, but we have a vague idea of how these amps would pair with a variety of gear. Yes, headphones up to 600 ohms will work just fine on both of these amplifiers. Even the Mothouse Argon should pair without an issue. Both amps apparently have an output impedance of 3.6 ohms. This means you can use a vast majority of headphones including planar magnetic. Both amps are sturdy and well built. So, the 602 does make a very strong point for itself. I think it makes more sense than the Lox GP20 and the Shitlier because both of these amps will probably tempt you to change tubes as soon as possible. The 604, well, that's kind of a mixed bag. I don't understand why X-Duo decided to make a fully balanced tube hybrid with no option for a single ended connection. That's unnecessarily limiting the customer base. A lot of people do not have a balanced stack or headphones wired for balanced connection. That's just more cost. Cost that frankly, people should consider before buying something like the 604. The other issue with the 604 is the ridiculous double volume control. They don't really make sense to me. I see X-Duo's rationale and I acknowledge it is an answer, but frankly it's a terrible one. If your headphones have a weak driver, get it fixed. I know, sometimes it's not possible. Some people have headphones that are out of warranty, discontinued, or simply cannot be repaired or replaced for a variety of reasons. And for you, the need for the 604 might be paramount. And yes, there are plenty of audiophiles who suffer from hearing loss. Consequently, having an analog volume control to address this will be welcome to them. 
but neither of these reasons explains why X-Duo could not also include a global volume control in addition to the dual volume option. When there is a will, there is a way. And for me, the fact that X-Duo did not even bother seems to be counterintuitive. Adjusting volume on the 604 is not impossible or particularly difficult, but it can be annoying. I never thought this process was cute or entertaining. Having said all of this, if you can live with the two concerns I have mentioned about the 604, then yes, it is still value. Overall, I'm both surprised and thrilled to see that X-Duo was able to achieve good hybrid tube amps for their respective prices. I said in the Logstreet P20 review that the P20 is a good starter tube amp. You have to put effort into it to get the best out of it. I do not think you will need to put in that type of effort into the MT602 or 604. Out of the box, both of these amps may be pleasing to those who are looking for what they offer.